welcome back everyone. Today, we're diving into some advanced insights on the Forecasting and Policy Analysis System, or FPAS, with none other than Narek Ghazaryan, board member of the Central Bank of Armenia and former IMF economist. This episode is part of a series titled Everything You Need to Know as a Board Member or Economist in a Central Bank with a State-of-the-Art Mark II Framework, where we explore the most critical aspects of central banking. Narek, it's great to have you here. Thanks, Anahit. Always a pleasure to join you, especially on these important topics that are key to shaping informed and effective monetary policy. So let's start with FPAS. There's been a shift from what we call FPAS Mark I to Mark II. Could you tell us about the reasoning behind this evolution? Certainly. FPAS Mark I provided a solid framework but had limitations, especially if the training wasn't there. We saw that young economists often fresh from academia, could develop a model says mentality if they relied too heavily on just one model. This is something Don Cohn at the Federal Reserve highlighted over decades. He insisted the Fed staff avoid using their primary model to generate baseline scenarios. His reasoning was that over-reliance on one model leads to a loss of analytical depth and weakens the central bank's capacity for nuanced, robust policy discussion. Right. So instead of letting a model dictate outcomes, the focus shifts to using models as benchmarks. Exactly. We are aiming for macroeconomic consistency, but it's impossible to achieve with only one model. That's unrealistic. Instead, we use various models as benchmarks. This approach gives us a frame of reference, helping us understand the economic environment and discuss uncertainties effectively. FPAS Mark II isn't about replacing Mark Thrust tools, but expanding the economist's toolkit ensuring they use these tools as aids to deeper economic understanding, not as definitive answers. And how do we handle legacy tools? Are we moving away from things like the Kalman filter? No, absolutely not. We're still using the Kalman filter because it's a powerful tool, especially when aligned with linear assumptions. But F Pass Mark II emphasizes that economists should critically engage with these tools, recognizing both their strengths and limitations. Our objective is to develop economists who are among the best in the world in policy modeling with the analytical range to support nuanced, context-driven policy recommendations. So it's not just about new tools, but fostering better human capital? Precisely. It's about building human capital and enhancing our economists' capacity to think critically. FPAS Mark II provides a platform for economists to leverage the latest methodologies while being grounded in the practical knowledge we've built over time. We want to cultivate economists who are adept at using all available tools, old and new, and can think independently to interpret economic conditions effectively. That makes a lot of sense, Narek. It sounds like F Pass Mark II is about bridging knowledge, training, and critical thinking. Any last thoughts? Yes. This approach prepares us to face complex, evolving economic landscapes more effectively. And I want to emphasize that the transition to Mark the Seku is about leveraging everything we've learned and achieved in the past while continuously refining our analytical processes. We're not discarding any part of FPAS Mark I. We're simply refining our methods and raising the standards for policy modeling and analysis. Uh... Thank you, Narek, for those insights. And to our listeners, if you're as fascinated by these topics as we are, Consider applying for one of the scholarships offered by the Global Forecasting School. It's a great opportunity to be part of a program that equips you to be the best of the best in economic analysis and policy. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share to support the Better Policy Project. Until next time.